Hello. I am not sure what's going on here. It looks like I might be live right now. We were having some technical difficulties. I was supposed to be showing my studio off to you, but my phone is not cooperating. So I guess I'm just going to talk a bit about what I do and how I do it. So uh, my name is Amanda Presky. I run a business called Circuit Breaker Labs, and the whole point of what I do is to transform electronic waste into something awesome. So earrings, for example, um, I do a lot of art pieces too. We're going to be incorporating um, circuit boards mostly, but also anything else that counts as electronic waste. So old capacitors, resistors, um, wires, keyboard parts, anything really that I can turn into something new and fun and something that isn't trash. So I got my start when I was a student at the Rochester Institute of Technology, um, tons of waste just sitting around in the labs. And I thought that was pretty wasteful um, and also a treasure trove for fun materials to work with. I've always been interested in finding new ways to use materials and really pushing the boundaries of what you can do with something, especially things considered trash. So when I was at RIT, I was just getting into working with epoxy resin and I just thought combined with circuit boards, it transformed the circuit board into something completely different. Obviously you can still tell it's a circuit board, but under resin and in a new medium as jewelry or wearables or art, it takes on a whole new life. So I love being able to use that to show off how beautiful technology can be, how beautiful recycling can be, and also incorporate a lot of science and STEM themes into what I'm doing to just bring it all together and show people that science is awesome. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite boards just because that's where a lot of my inspiration and ideas come from are the boards themselves and the colors they take on. Um, I'm sure a lot of you already know what circuit boards are and how they work and, and what they're made of, but I'm gonna just touch on the basics anyway in case anyone listening has no idea what I'm talking about. So typically when we think of circuit boards, I think a lot of people think of motherboards. So that would be the circuit board inside your computer. And from board to board, they're gonna have a lot of the same components, but the board in a printer or the board inside of the keyboard are gonna look very different. And those differences I think are really interesting too. So my background's in chemistry. So what I'm saying is more from my artistic perspective and how I like the way things look. So if you have any comments um, about maybe more the, the more technical side of, of what's going on, um, I'd love to hear from you. So here is a board that I've already used to make uh, some things out of. And what I like about this one is the bright green. Um, it almost has like a cat's eye effect as you rotate it. And when I put this under resin, that's magnified. It really brings out that unique part of the circuit board. Um, but I also like this one uh, because it has some blue spots on it, really any variation. So, you know, most circuit boards are green. Um, it's a standard. Um, so when I find something that goes outside that, say for example, this whiteboard, I get really excited. So this one has a uh, red solder mask on it, or sorry, red silk screen with the white solder mask. Um, and I just think this is really fun. So I ended up using this piece to create um, a few things, um, including a piece that really needed a moon. So that worked out really great with a white circuit board. And then this one, this really pretty turquoise color is, I believe, from an Epson printer. And I think another fun feature about this kind of board is that you can tell where the buttons were. So e-waste is, of course, a global problem, really. Um, it's especially with the constant advancement of technology and sort of the culture of planned obsolescence. So it's really important if you have e-waste that you're not throwing it into the garbage and having it end up in a landfill. There are lots of recycling agencies um, 
my I'm most familiar with ones in Rochester, New York and the surrounding area. Um, and many of them will be R2 certified. So that's something you really want to make sure when you're looking to get rid of your electronics that you are working with a recycler that upholds um, safety and environmental standards. So I like to work with those sorts of companies to source e-waste. Um, we have a sort of cyclical relationship where I get some boards from them, I use it to create work, and then any leftovers that I have go back to them so that everything is either upcycled or recycled. I also love getting boards from people I meet at maker fairs or craft shows. Um, it's always an option to bring your unwanted stuff to me and I'll help you take care of it or turn it into jewelry. So that's where a lot of my materials come from. Um, RIT and U of R were also quite helpful um, since all their science and engineering departments are continually turning over electronic waste. So I think I'm going to see if I can move my laptop around without creating too much trouble, because uh, I really want to show you my studio. That was the point of me coming on here and and sharing this, because this is one of the features that I can't really do at in-person maker fairs. I can talk about the process all day, but to actually see it, I think is a lot more interesting. So bear with me as my computer is about to jiggle a whole bunch, and I'm going to try to balance um myself and what's going on in the background so this is my workstation so this is what i consider a voltaic function and multi-device workspace so this is for projects that don't have a designated area for working so when i am creating things a lot of processes of my steps and what i make require specific tools and materials and so I want to make sure um, as I'm trying to create things that all the tools and materials I need are at hand. <laughs> I'm sure you all know what it's like to put down a pair of scissors and try to figure out what you did with it 10 minutes later. So um, one of my ways around that is having, say, 20 pairs of scissors. So anywhere I go, there's going to be a pair of scissors so I don't have to hunt around for them. So let's see, behind me, I have a tool of the workshop. That's Carvey. So Carvey, if you're unfamiliar, is a product by Inventables. It's a CNC router. I love it because it's a contained unit. So when I'm cutting through circuit board, um, which produces some really nasty particulates, fiberglass, metals, things like that, um, the, the way that the CNC is constructed it contains all of that, which I really love. So the CNC is also how I get those really complex shapes for doing ornaments or artwork, um, things where I can't do them by hand. Um, that's why I really love using Kirby. Also have over here, I'm sure some of you have seen this. I, have a blue forge. I can't use it for cutting circuit boards. Um, there's a number of reasons, one of which is the gaseous when particulates and things that it would create in the process of cutting a circuit board, even with venting, you can still smell it, which means it's getting into your body. And I do not want circuit board parts inside of my body. <laughs> it's not good for your lungs. It's not good for your health. So I'm also concerned about the different absorption wavelengths of the materials in the circuit board because it's a heterogeneous material. So if anyone's ever tried that, I'd love to hear from you. Um, maybe in an industrial space with um, heavy duty ventilation, it might be worth pursuing. But for now, I use it for cutting acrylic and wood. I create science themed ornament sets and fun little pins and things like that. Um, really, it was just to satisfy my curiosity and working with a laser. <laughs> All right, so over here, you can see my photo setup. I sell online and post on social media quite a bit, so I need some way of taking consistent, good quality photos. So I use some of this light tent with multiple daylight wavelength bulbs to eliminate the photographic area. And I have a ton of fun props. Um, given the scientific nature of what I do, you can see there's a biometric flask, uh, graduated cylinder, I've got Erlenmeyer flasks and beakers. All helps to uh, make those photos look really fun and um, add an extra layer of interest. I also have a lot of floppy disks. 
or I guess these would be the three and a half inch discs. It's more like fun for photos because they're so colorful and they're really graphic. And uh, I think you better, younger generations recognize it as a safe symbol. So there's a little bit of uh, recognition there. So over here in the corner, well, there's two things going on here. One is my, what I call my finishing table. So that lime green desk is for finishing or jewelry pieces, junk brands, doing all my work. Um, anything where I need to, basically it's pliers. Um, that's what that's going to happen. And I'm also excited about some merchandising for an upcoming holiday market that I'll be participating in. It's in DC, so sorry, New Yorkers, unless you can come down here, you won't be able to see me in person until next year. Um, but I like to plan out where things go and figure out my booth line ahead of time. It makes doing live events and exhibits a lot easier because um, there's not a lot of time to set up. So if you're unfamiliar, or actually, even if you are, I'm sure you're aware of all the planning that uh, artists and exhibitors and makers go into when they're putting things together. So planning ahead of time reduces a lot of stress. See if I can back up a little. So you can see behind me a another work area. This is um, what I call my art setup. So over here I have everything I needed to make framed art. So that's one of my newer endeavors. Um, I do things like I showed earlier, like anatomical hearts, world maps, local maps. I did one of the Rochester City skyline and shape of New York State. Really, the possibilities are endless. So on this section over here, I've got all the frames and adhesives and matting materials, all that sort of thing, so that everything is in one workspace, so I don't have to go all over the studio looking for what I need to finish a piece. Let's see. Okay, so... One aspect I mentioned earlier about what I do uh, with the resin, it's what I use for making jewelry look finished, and that is behind that door right there. So that room is really a closet that I've transformed into a resin area. Um, if you've ever worked with resin, you may understand it's quite a finicky material. Um, temperature is a very important consideration for the success of your project. You have to work at higher than room temperature in order for the resin to cure properly without using fancy tools. So I don't use a vacuum chamber or a bubble, but I rely on heat to do that. So just with the use of an incandescent bulb, that room and the work area usually is around 80 Fahrenheit, maybe 85, and that's a perfect working temperature. I can't imagine heating my whole studio at that temperature. So I'm gonna open the door, we'll see if we can see in there and you can see what that looks like. Let's see. Okay, I just don't want to handle the computer around too much and make this hard to watch. Um, but you can see there is a table in there. There's actually two. Um, I try to level the surface as I can um, because resin will take exactly the shape of the, the angle that you put your piece on. So if I want a nice, even level coat of resin, I can't a little surface. So that's this is what those pieces look like uh, with resin on them. So it's got this really nice, domed, shiny finish. And that dome right there is an amazing phenomenon of resin. So just like water, resin has a really high surface tension, which means when you put the resin on as a coating, it's going to form this natural meniscus, this dome. And when it's cured, it ends up creating this really nice lens. So it obscures the very edges and distorts the image a little bit, but I think that looks really cool. And it also really brings out the detail of the sturdy board itself. Some boards have a very delicate texture to them. When you add resin, it sort of erases that texture, smooths it out, and makes it shiny. Like that really completes it and makes it go from sort of discarded trash to a really nice finished piece. All right, we're about to get uh, bumpy again. I'm going to take you into my workshop. 
that's where the cutting takes place if it's not done on the CNC. So as we walk by, I've got lots of storage shelves for all the materials I use. More storage shelves. And actually on the way, I can show you my inventory system. So I've got these series of shelves and bins where all of the finished work that I create is organized. So for instance, here um, near the center, that's where all my cufflinks are. Everything is arranged by color as well, which makes finding something to fill an order or figuring out what to bring to a craft show really easy. And over here, I've got a ton of earrings. Earrings are one of my favorite things to make, so I always have tons of varieties of those. And then this is my brand new shipping area. I just refinished this studio a couple of months ago, so I'm really excited to have all of this space and all of these materials, uh, most of which are upcycled um, to process orders. So everything I need from chains to key rings, bubble mailers, gift boxes, and then huge, huge stashes of boxes there. Um, I save everything. The, I think, especially working with upcycled materials, it really gets you thinking about what you use and how or what happens to it after you're done using it. So I'm very conscientious now about plastic use, about what I'm doing with shipments that come in, whether for personal or business use. So I want to make sure that I'm reusing as much as humanly possible. And then after recycling what I can't use. Okay, so here is the basement, sorry, the, um, the workshop. So this is where I keep a lot of the circuit boards. You'll see three shelves behind me. And then up this loft, there's another seven <laughs> shelves worth of circuit boards. So they're all organized by color and type and whether or not they match. So a fun thing about working with some large e-waste companies is that they take on projects where major offices are clearing out and upgrading. So what you end up with is a ton of identical motherboards, which for one of a kind jewelry doesn't sound that exciting, but when I'm trying to create, say, a bunch of ornaments, cutting the same shapes over and over again, it's much easier to plan the arrangement when the boards are identical and you don't have to remeasure so what I mean by that is boards have a lot of holes on them. And sometimes if you cut something and there's a hole sort of on the edge of the shape you're trying to make and it distorts the, the image, I, I don't like the way that looks. <laughs> um, so that helps um, make sure that the cutting process is more efficient and that helps me keep things more affordable. So here's one board that I cut out. Um, this one was made to mostly create anatomical heart shapes for art pieces. Um, you can see right here there's a hole, and right by my thumb there's a hole, and I like to make sure I can avoid those so that the final piece looks really nice. Let's see, so here is my fancy workbench, although I wouldn't trust a clean workbench. <laughs> so I have a drill press and a miter saw and a ton of face shields. So one thing about working with circuit boards, of course, they're pointy, they're sharp. There's a lot of um, heavy materials that I have to remove. So for example, these plastic planners and the metal boxes that contain the peripheral connections, things like that, they gotta come off because I can't cut through those um, and they won't fit in jewelry anyway. So um, through cutting and clearing off and dealing with all of that sort of stuff, face shields to protect myself. I'm also armed to the teeth with gloves and goggles and I have a vacuum system set up so that all the dust is also contained. Um, if you can tell already, I'm very, very conscientious of the safety um, involved in making this because the materials themselves aren't great for your health. Um, particulates, just like with woodworking, they can sort of act like asbestos. So if you're considering getting into making circuit board jewelry, 
I encourage you to think or, or anything, circuit board, anything, um, just to make sure you're protecting yourself and that you are using the right things um, so that you don't end up harming yourself in the process. All right. So I started Circuit Breaker Labs as a side project um, as a student at RIT. I continued when I was at the U of R and it took getting a PhD in chemistry to realize that my heart really wasn't making. I absolutely love chemistry. I love everything about science, but I love making just a little bit more. So when I finished up at the U of R for four and a half years ago now, I switched into turning Circuit Breaker Labs into my full-time career. So it's been about four and a half years now, and I've loved every minute of it. I mean, COVID has certainly made things a lot more difficult, um, but I especially love now that we've got all these virtual opportunities to connect with everyone and talk about science and art and all of those things that we love. Uh, currently, I reside in the DC area. So I come back to upstate New York a lot to show off my work and um, continue collaborating with all of the scientists and makers in the region because I still love it so very much. Um, I guess that's about it for the tour. I don't know if there's an easy way to take questions. Um, but if you want to chat, I'm on social media as Circuit Breaker Labs, Instagram and Facebook. So I love talking and chatting about things, um, taking questions, um, anything related. Uh, I'd love to hear from you if you work with circuit boards at all. Um, I think it's really exciting to find other people who like using it as an artistic medium. Um, in addition to, you know, what all the things Arduino and Raspberry Pis can do, because that's also really exciting. Um, my work is available online at circuitbreakerlabs.com, and I absolutely love taking custom projects. Uh, I can turn circuit board into almost anything fun, um, logos and different shapes. Um, a lot of what I do is based on science themes, so that gives you an idea. Um, so I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you for joining. Oop, let me make sure there's no questions. Um, thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in real life at uh, Maker Fair next year. <laughs>